So living donor liver transplantation is the commonest form of liver transplantation in India mainly because of the shortage of cadaveric donor organs and this situation applies also to a large part of the rest of Asia. Living donor liver transplantation has got advantages. In the pediatric situation it helps parents decide at a time to suit them when their child can have their transplant. The risks involved for the parents if they were to become donors is very low. In the adult situation also there are advantages. The advantages being that the patient gets a very good quality organ that hasn't been through the process of brain death. They get an organ at a time when it suits them the best. So you can choose the timing of the transplant. By law, anybody who is a near relative can become a living donor. So parents, children, siblings. Once you go to the next level of relative, the law requires additional requirements to be met before someone can be labeled a living donor. There is also the rare situation where you can have an unrelated donor, but this also requires a lot of additional legislative work and assessment to ensure that the relationship between the donor and the recipient is appropriate. So the donors are extensively assessed and worked up, both physically as well as psychologically. From a physical point of view, you make sure there are no other physical problems, no other ill health problems like hypertension, uh, mild diabetes, being slightly overweight, high levels of uh, blood lipids or, 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 or minor subtle problems with the thyroid or something like that. They also then are very carefully assessed from a liver function and liver anatomy point of view because we want to ensure that the operation to remove the right half of the liver or the left half of the liver is done as safely as possible that produces a liver graft that is suitable for the patient as well as being absolutely certain that we do not endanger the donor at least from a point of view accepting abnormal or, or unusual blood vessel anatomy situation. There are risks to the donor. It depends on the extent of the liver operation. So if a small part of the liver is being removed and the commonest situation here is a parent donating to a child where only the left lateral segment is removed, the risks to the donor are very low. The risks change when you remove the right half of the liver, which is the bigger half of the liver, approximately 60 to 65 percent of the liver. We have to ensure we leave behind at least 35% of the liver in the donor and the risks of other complications like bile leaks, bleeding, development of a wound infection, development of a wound hernia, development of a chest infection or the small risk of a repeat operation, all of this amounts to approximately 10 to 15% after the, uh, after the operation. We make sure there's no evidence of any infection either in the donor or the recipient in the days running up to the transplant. The donor operation is an operation where the most important factor that remains through the entire operation is the safety of the donor. It's important this operation is conducted carefully, slowly, meticulously and you follow a plan that is very well charted out before the operation. It involves separating the blood vessels going to the part of the liver that you want to remove. So the right artery for example, the right portal vein, the right bile duct system. You then identify the outflow from the liver, so the right hepatic vein and sometimes there may be more than one of these 
veins to be, uh, to be carefully prepared. And then the third step is to divide the liver through the liver, through the middle of the liver, protecting the blood vessels, especially on the side going to the donor, and making sure that the cut edges are clean, the cut edges don't bleed, and the cut edges do not leak bile. So the next step involves dividing the bile duct on the side of the liver that is being removed for transplantation. After this, we wash the liver out after dividing the blood vessels. The liver is then taken to the bench, put in a bowl of iced solution, and then we reconstruct some additional vessels. This usually involves adding some extra vein grafts to make sure the venous drainage of the liver graft is perfect. The liver is then transferred to the recipient operating theatre and implanted into the patient. The first join is between the hepatic vein and the vena cava. The next join is the inflow vein, the portal vein. Blood is then circulated through the liver. And then lastly, the artery is carefully reconstructed and joined to the patient's artery and the arterial flow re-established. After this, we get evidence that the liver is beginning to work. We start to see some bile production. And the next step after this is to join up the patient's bile duct. The last steps of the operation involve uh, drying up, making sure that there is no ongoing bleeding and then finally the patient is closed. On the donor side, the last parts of the operation involve making sure that the blood vessels that have been cut are carefully sutured closed. We make sure there is no leakage of bile. We then place a drain and then close the abdomen of the patient. Once the operation is finished, we would expect the donor to return to the intensive care unit in a conscious situation where they can drink small amounts of fluid and pain control is achieved with a combination of intravenous painkillers as well as sometimes an epidural catheter. For the recipient, we would expect the stay on the intensive care unit to be longer. They usually go back on full ventilation and over a period of 24 to 48 hours, this is reduced and the patient woken up and the tubes removed. We would expect a donor to stay on the intensive care unit for a period of one to two days and the recipient to stay on the intensive care unit for a period of anywhere between two days and five or six days at an average. Most donors are well enough to go home by about day five, day six or day seven after surgery. If they were to have a complication like a chest infection or a leakage of bile, then the stay might be a day or two longer. For the recipient, the stay is longer. If things go very well, some recipients can be home within a week after the transplants. But the average stay after a transplant is approximately two weeks.